what is up everybody it is jack floyd here and i am super excited to be hanging out with you and doing a little check out on the uh, yara one campaign so we're going to take a look at the yara one campaign with riververse seeing what's going on with that seeing how things are going uh maybe making some predictions and whatnot so if you haven't already make sure to check out the stream on youtube youtube.com forward slash jack lloyd uh, that's the best place for me to see your comments and if i see comments i We'll often take a look at them and uh, and see what's going on with them. So be sure to uh, chime on in and let me know that you're here. Make sure to hit the notification button too once you get onto YouTube, youtube.com forward slash Jack Lloyd. And uh, as people are coming in here, I do want to show off something too. I actually just got in today the Florida Man comic, which has uh, Mike Barron on it, and he's going to be working on another Ripperverse title. So I, I thought that was a lot of fun, especially since uh, the whole Florida Man scheme definitely fits my vibe. Uh, considering I am a Florida man, and we've made songs, including a Florida man and Florida boy, which were real, real fun. So I'm excited about uh, checking out this title and and reviewing it later and uh, seeing how it goes because it's it's got a lot of you know fun details to it. I mean, you can see on the cover there, you know, he's riding the gator like he's a cowboy, jumping over some ladies in, a, in what's like a convertible, maybe a Corvette or something like that. So a lot of fun. There's a lot of fun things happening right now. Um, as you probably have seen and, and can know, because there's literally uh, so many different great projects going on, which I do also have to plug one thing really quick too, um, because of course my wife would be not happy with me if I didn't make sure to cover this. So just before I get to the Riververse thing, um, I'm going to show you here what we got cooking. Uh, we have our next uh, music video campaign actually up. So... Uh, as you know, we love doing music and music videos, and uh, we have our next campaign here, the uh, End the Fed campaign going on right now on Indiegogo. Um, so you can just go into Indiegogo, type in uh, End the Fed, and you'll see that there we have a trailer for it. We're looking to shoot this music video in DC. Um, so you know we've been scaling up with all our different production projects and have done some really cool music videos, you know, a past. So you can take a look there. You know, there's a cool little art, um, but you'll see there the song itself. And some of our past music videos, you want to get a sense of what we've done. And they got some really cool perks in this, too. Um, we have, uh, you know, some stickers, a set photo, a coaster, and the Fed coaster. Uh, we have uh, art prints. We even have roll credit. You can get credit in the music video itself. So definitely make sure to check that on out um, later on once you have time after the stream. So without further ado, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Riververse Yaira number one campaign. So as you may have already heard, because uh, this campaign was record breaking, uh, the amount of uh, funding they got in the, in the short amount of time they had um, is, is pretty incredible. So they've already hit their million dollar mark and are you know moving up now toward the $2 million more mark as they continue to get more backers. Um, so this uh, title obviously comes after they're successfully doing ISM one, ISM two, and AlphaCore, which of course we support and we're excited to check out and read. And we thought that with each um, story, um, everything has continued to get better and better. So I, I think that it's uh, it's pretty incredible um, what what they have going on. Um, so as you can see here at the top of the uh, the campaign, they've already done six thousand cover A's, three thousand cover B's, two thousand cover C's, three thousand cover D's. So you can see their cover D is pretty popular. Um, so it looks like. Uh, you know, people have their their fan favorites. So if you see here um, on the short story, we're going to walk through this like as if you haven't seen it before. Um, so if you know if for these four, it's all good. We'll just uh, we'll talk about it as we go. So the uh, Yaira number one is set in the Ripperverse, written by the superstar twins of horror Jen and Sylvia Soska, who we actually got to meet um, in Orlando when we went to the MegaCon event. So they were super cool, uh, lots of fun to see, uh, very personal. They did a great job representing the Ripperverse brand. So that was that was awesome. And, you know, I'm really excited to see how they take the story. So it says they, they powerfully uh, are powerfully penciled by Deborah Carita uh, uh, with letters by the one and only Eric Weathers. The hour number one is a 90 page graphic novel that promises to wow you with stunning cinematic action and answer burning questions about the Ripperverse's own resident femme fatale. So, Yaira has had quite a bit of hype behind it, obviously, because the character is super cool. Her design um, is pretty amazing in terms of the color scheme and, and the brightness uh, to her suit. It's very engaging, um, and it makes you wonder what 
she is and where she comes from. And as we saw up here too, there was a live action trailer that they did for this, which is fascinating because I mean, the budget you know to do that is is still pretty uh, hefty. I know Eric had said that um, the cost of doing live action is even a little cheaper than doing you know animation. Uh, but it didn't look like it was cheap <laughs> to do either. You know, when they did this video, um, they had, you know, big sets and, and a crane and they, you know, stage everything. They had outdoor action with, you know, the uh, cars being smashed. So it was pretty, you know, big orchestration for what is just a comic book trailer. You know, it's, it was it was pretty uh, in-depth, you know, with what they did. So uh, really interesting to see where they could go with that and, you know, the next level. Like, would, would they do more animated, live action? You know, who knows? We'll, we'll have to find out and see, it, you know, what comes up for the next uh, comic release. So the log line. Whom or what is Yaira? To the citizens of Flores Park, the Alpha Corps who protect them from except related threats, Yaira is nothing less than a powerful force of nature, unlike anything else they've ever encountered. In the recent aftermath of a brutal battle that ended in stalemate, Alpha Corps commander Brian Slory told Yaira to vacate Flores Park and warned her never to return. But Yaira plays by no rules but her own. And now she's back. What is this frosty force want in sunny Flores Park? And what motivated her return? Yaira's origins go back farther than anyone can possibly imagine or believe, and sometimes the cost of a primeval past is the haunting of one's present. When you wield such whoop, such immeasurable power, your choices can have drastic and long-lasting consequences. What happens when Yaira's past catches up with her and those in her orbit are unwittingly, unwittingly forced to pay the price for her actions? Read Yaira number one by Jen and Sylvia Soska to find the answers to these and other questions about the mysterious Yaira. Pre-order your copy of Yaira number one today to learn about this breakout femme fatale powerhouse, Yaira. And there's a parental advisory, so that's kind of interesting. I haven't seen a, a parental advisory, at least like this before. So they, they actually have a, a little warning here. Yaira number one contains <laughs> depictions of violence in troubling situations, suitable for mature, mature audiences age 16 and above. Ooh, so that's interesting. The uh, Riververse here finally has something where they're suggesting an audience age. That's interesting. 16 plus. So I'm wondering if that means that the, the violence is going to be a bit more graphic this time. Because before, what you know, the, the violence is a little bit more just, um, you know, something like Justice League kind of level. It wasn't necessarily crazy violent, but maybe this is going to take it to the next level. Maybe a bit more bloody. We'll see. So looking here at this uh, this panel work here, and you know just looking at the coloring and the and the line art, um, it's it's very solid. It certainly has a lot of detail to it, and some cool angles. So I, I think this is previewing it quite well. Um, you can see that you know there's some kind of energy beam. There's police, and then you know it looks like they're running away. But then you see clearly a, <laughs> a Yaira in a, a type of a hoodie coming through. And then she's uh, flying up to the, where the ice stuff is. And then it looks like, uh, you know, she's reaching and grabbing somebody. So, you know, is that a fight? Is, is she going after someone that is bad? Is she helping somebody? We're going to have to find out for ourselves when we, uh, when we get this in. And I did get all, all four covers. So I'm excited to check it out in every single cover. And if we look here whoop, at this uh, next panel... You can see that here she's in some type of big, uh, some some type of uh, museum of sorts. It would look like a, a, you know, it's not. I don't know if it's necessarily, you know, like a bat cave thing, you know, compared to, to Batman. But you know, because you have this kind of Roman chariot and you have some old outfits that look like maybe different to uh, warriors throughout history. You have an ornate uh, kind of floor design, so you know, it looks like Yaira is in her plain clothes self going you know through this arena and she has you know this older woman who's uh talking to her and it's really interesting because there's she's wearing some type of cloak strap that's got this triangle shape and some symbols on it i wonder if that's connecting to anything of her past or if you know there's some important symbolism there you can see her there at the bottom a little bit more up close with the upside down you know triangle and then it's got this little triangle symbol inside almost like an all-seeing eye little maybe something egyptianish 
But whoever it is, you know, Yaira here goes from having no blue hair to suddenly getting blued and her hair getting blue. So her energy is powering up. So whoever this is, maybe knows who Yaira's true identity is, maybe. We have another panel here. It shows Yaira. Oh, okay, so now we see this fighting panel. So that I think that's indicating that she might be fighting a bad guy. Because, right, if she's smacking down this other person who's got this ice and this kind of blue hair with a bunch of these earrings and hoops you know, <laughs> through her uh, eyebrows, too. Uh, I'm going to go with maybe she's an enemy of sorts or, or at least... A foe, but then you know Yara's there, and she almost has her hand up, saying, "You know, don't don't hurt me." Then Yara's looking down, and all of a sudden, you know, grabbing her head. So it's a good question: is is this except, or is this person to accept? Is is their role to be a bad guy, or are they just, you know, someone who's you know figuring out themselves and and not trying to do harm, and you know, something's happening to them? You know, makes you wonder here, especially when she has her hand up here. To what extent? She's a dedicated uh, bad guy or, or girl, I guess I can say. So, all right. Yara number one campaign items. So it says Yara number one covers A, B, C, and D. So I got those. They also have those in the CGC signature series. So that's awesome for those who want to save some money. I mean, I've always thought that was very kind of them to do that because it's a pain in the butt to have to send it yourself to get those graded and sent back. So they're saving you a bunch of time. So... Um, that's pretty awesome that they they have that. Uh, they have Ripperverse Magazine number one and the Collector's Edition. I did get both of those because, uh, you know, it just looks cool. Like it, I think that was a great idea because it's it's like, you know, you can do the, the old school comic book thing where, you know, sometimes they would put more character detail in a comic book. They might have like little vignettes of something like they'll have a newspaper clipping like they did in Superman a lot. Or they have some like secret file where it's like, you know, if the government's writing up something on some someone in the X-Men, they have this file on them and it gives you a little um, insight into the character within a, a comic book, you know, floppy. But having a magazine to me is is actually pretty cool because then it separates the um, comic book itself with just telling the story, you know, and then having maybe a little like insights there. It separates that out and makes it where it's like you have this separate thing where you can really develop more information about the series and, and give special treatment and not disrupt the flow um, of the comic book itself. You know, it, it's not disrupting, you know, as you're reading through the comic, you're just focusing on the story. You know, there's not like in between um, notes and things like that. So I, I can see that being an advantage. And, and personally, I just think it's cool because it gives you a lot of opportunities to, to put different artwork in there. Oh, this is funny. Mike here says, I heard this campaign was a failure. <laughs> yep. You know, if this is a failure, Please, I want to fail this hard. <laughs> so, oh, oh. so um, you know, with the uh, magazine, I you know definitely picked up both of those, and that, that's pretty cool. And it looks like they also do the signature series for the magazine, so you can get those both graded. So that's kind of cool to have both the comics and the magazine graded. Uh, that's that's real nice. That's some fan service there. There's a Yara shirt. So they have um, the uh, I guess a new one. They have the Yara shirt from 2022, a 3D asset shirt, which is really funny. That was the the joke that you know people were saying that oh you use 3D assets at some point and you know I saw them, number one, which I, I I don't even personally care about you know 3D 3D assets. I mean who what's what's the big deal about any of that? You know it's you use what you need to use in order to achieve an aesthetic. Um, it does it, and the question is just, does it look good or not? That's that's basically it. You know, people use modeling for all kinds of stuff. It's just, you know, workflow and, and speed of whatever you want to get done. So I thought that was a really fun way to uh, play off that comedy. And, and the characters they, they made, I'll show you later, the uh, shirt are pretty funny, you know, playing off that. So the Yara poster, they got the Yara poster 2023. So the one from before. So they're, they're keeping up some of the old products too. So you can get those if you missed out before. Ladies of the Ripperverse poster. That's cool. Oh, and the, the Dokuman cards deck too. Um, I'm going to intentionally doing this. I want to pick them up later. So I want to give the campaign a boost toward close. You know, when they're doing their final throws, I want to, you know, get that toward the end to help push things forward. So, oh, hey, what's up, fuck? Good to see you. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at some of these benchmarks, which as you're going to see, uh, some of these have already been hit. The 300,000, Yara yields to no one. We are excited to inform you that our operations are running smoothly, efficiently. Our team is working diligently to fulfill your orders promptly. As your continuous support has allowed us to grow our business, we would like to express our gratitude by offering you an exclusive behind-the-scenes look 
at our Yaira live action short film. So did that, launched that, and uh, actually the 300,000 is is now times four, right? <laughs> With 1.2 million, so. $450,000 art contest unlocked. Thanks for your support. To celebrate, we're going to host another art contest and highlight the amazing talent of our fans. I'm definitely going to do another review video. I have not been very good at picking <laughs> the winners, that's for sure. I think I pick the ones who you know are, are definitely talented and probably would win maybe other conditions uh, not be having to be held, right? Because as before, when you do the art contest, you have to be 18 years old. You have to respond in time. If there was something that was you no know, not done right, where you had an element that wasn't supposed to be there, they can't you know use it. Whatever. There's a few conditions that kicked out some artists um, from prior things, and so sometimes I picked artists that the art looked good, but there was an issue, so, you know, behind the scenes, and so they couldn't pick those. So, but they did pick good ones before. It's, they certainly picked good uh, artists. It's just maybe some of the better ones before just couldn't make it for you know reasons of, of, of the contest rules. So we'll go over that contest later and, and take a look at the artist. All right, $500,000. Uh, oh, and uh, like I says, I didn't pick the winners either, but all winners were good. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's like they pick good people. It, it just, you know, it, it, it was just tough to pick it right when, <laughs> when people didn't qualify for other reasons. But I guess, you know, maybe there's some things they did that was was not right. So, hey. All right, so who's that artist 500,000? Hit that, of course. It says, we are truly humbled and amazed by the overwhelming support and enthusiasm we have received from our dedicated fans and followers. It is because of your unwavering support and trust in our creative vision that we have been able to achieve this remarkable milestone. We can't express enough how grateful we are for your continued support and belief in our mission to deliver an exceptional comic experience. We are eagerly, eagerly looking forward to sharing more details about these upcoming releases. It should be revealed at the proper time. Until then, here is the artist for Gooding, Will Conrad. Woo! So that was unlocked. They now uh, announce that. The Horseman art reveal, 750,000. That's super cool. I really enjoyed that one. Um, the I think Horseman is definitely going to be uh, a fan favorite. I did a review of the Horseman art and just noted how the details, you know, really spark curiosity about the character and, and what they're going to do. I think that the more mature level of comic aspect was definitely necessary because it's looking like Horseman's going to be something that's a bit more mature audience, the violence more serious, more bloody, which again, that's cool because a lot of comic fans are a bit older <laughs> these days, especially in, in that genre. So having something that you can enjoy that's a little bit more, you know, mature level in terms of language and, and the and the action is very satisfying. So I think Horseman's going to be one of those very satisfying uh, comic books. So it says here that we're thrilled to announce that our latest project has reached an incredible pre-order milestone of $750,000. This remarkable accomplishment not only demonstrates the overwhelming support we have received from our community, but also empowers us to create three more captivating graphic novels. Incredible, right? Three more graphic novels. I mean, it's, it's mind-blowing, honestly. To commemorate this special occasion, we are thrilled to unveil yet another stunning cover that we can't wait to share with you for upcoming Horse and Book. So, you know, the fact that they already have um, not only successfully funded Yaira, but now are, are confirming uh, that multiple other projects are now underway is it, is just really something else i mean it's like you know what that snowball effect once you got a few good things going and then it lets you do a few more good things and then it excites people and it just keeps going and going mm, beautiful thing it's such a beautiful thing all right so it says uh one million thicker than blood um so that's where we're at right now the uh full details i think on that are not listed here i do know that um from what I saw online, Blood Ruth uh, had some teased art out um, showing that uh, uniquely Blood Ruth is going to be, um, in terms of the genre, more horror. So uh, I think we're going to be seeing more art come out from that, more teasers. The quality on the Blood Ruth um, is, is certainly impressive. I took a look at that and maybe we'll, we'll pop that open a little later, but uh, it, it's, it's a very strong uh, art design. So I think people are going to be excited about that. And it's more horror. So again, this keeps generating these questions. You know, which direction is Ripperverse going to teeter more toward just generally? Because we have some comics that, at least so far, could be a little bit more accessible for younger audience, right? I some certainly was more, you know, not as uh, violent or at least graphic. But then we're starting to see a little bit with Horseman and maybe with Bloodruth. 
there might be some more, you know, older audience uh, content. So I am starting to wonder which is going to be more favored, right? In the end, um, you know, certainly general audience, of course, keeps it wide, just like if you have a PG or PG-13 movie. But there's also the fan base that wants to see the hardcore action and, and, the, and the more mature, you know, language and seriousness of things. So again, I, I think they're going to do it all. Uh, you know, I think they're going to offer something for everybody, but it's possible that there might be a bias toward one genre. Like it might be the case that they end, they end up saying, okay, well, you know, we're going to have more titles that tend to be toward a more, you know, mid teen plus or higher teen plus audience and some that are younger, but you know, I, I could see that possibly happening, especially with this you know type of group. So, but we'll see. We'll see how it all comes together. And Mike said people seem to be interested in staying black and white. I mean, I can understand that if you want to do a special where you know it's a a black and white comic. Personally, I, I prefer colors. I I do like to see the richness of, of the colors and the dynamic of it. And then there's some people who do the in between where uh, a comic has generally black and white but some parts are in color like kind of as an accent that's a new modern thing that you know people are doing so i don't know i you know if it wasn't black and white i would give it a try i would still you know check it out of course uh, but personally i love you know rich beautiful colors that express the artwork in a way that just you know really captivates you so if this is the hard one that looks great yeah it's gonna be crazy. it's definitely gonna be crazy i think i think it's gonna just continue to inspire people to be like okay yeah, yeah yeah we want we want to see some hardcore you know action and 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 uh serious little violence you know that kind of thing where you get a little bit of blood here and there uh, i i think people are, are gonna want to see that next level stuff it just it just can't be helped right if you're gonna do something where you have superheroes in action right you know obviously for a kid's audience you can do the whole pow pow smack thing and you get arrested and you get thrown in whatever but you know when you're the comic book fans tend to be like, yeah, this is your chance to like really do something cool and like, you know, serious and like really get your heart racing, wondering if someone's going to live or die because it's that serious. So, uh, well, I think we'll see that starting to, to come to fruition here. There is an update section here at the bottom. It says on March 12, 2024, Yara has done it. The resident Femi Fatale and First Lady of the Riververse has crossed the 1 million mark in just 20, under 24 hours breaking the record set by ISM-1 of 30 hours. So definitely did note that, and that was super cool to watch. Uh, Yara means business, and she just sent Avery's prior record crashing into a car. Ah, that's true, just like in the trailer. Thank you so much to everyone who showed us incredible support in just the first day of the pre-order campaign. We're just getting started. So, um, yeah, this is uh, you know shaping up nicely. The artwork looks good. Uh, and uh, I'm going to pull up some of these perks um, here on the side. Let's see if I can pull this down. So we'll take a look here at the covers. And if I can open this image a new tab, then I can get this really zoomed in as you can see here. All right, so we have the uh, different covers here uh, drawn up. Some of them are a little bit you know, covered by each other, but you get the, the general idea. Um, what's really interesting about this is that uh, uniquely all of these covers to me are, are really good in, in terms of Every style is very competently drawn and very attractive. Uh, you know, sometimes the other ones that might be like, okay, this is a little bit too much in this genre, the realism. Even the realism on this Yaira where she looks, you know, very, you know, kind of painted real life, it, it actually holds up. It's, it, it is very solid. Like, it, it doesn't look, like, too hokey. It doesn't look too weird. Um because you know personally, I'm not like a fan of the realism for comics, but this one is not that 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 uh, off-putting. It's actually pretty good. Um, so uh, I'm I'm impressed. I think that that the uh, the continuity, whoever's doing this work, you know, they did a really good job of, of doing that all together. Now, of course, just looking at this art generally here, we do have to consider what's going on with each thing, and I do, of course, have questions. I gotta have questions here if I'm looking, because if we look at each of the designs, there are differences in outfits right this top yaira has a different chess piece you can see here it's got these you know it's kind of like a blue with this little ring around and then this right here you know has a little bit more of a different feel right there this one doesn't have um that gold like almost like a necklace in the blue it begins lower and certainly it branches out uh but 
it is a little bit different. And the same thing then over here, this Yara on the realism cover has a little bit of difference there too in, in, in the uh, the neck and, and chest. You know, it's got that gold line in between, kind of like the um, the first one up here. It's got a thicker band though, almost like a V band in the realism. So well, there certainly are, you know, aspects of similarity. There's, I am wondering for continuity purposes, what is going to be most canon? Uh, I do want to know that because you, know, you can't help but wonder, you know, wh which is the one that's supposed to be the most, or is it that these are different outfits in different settings? Uh, is it? Um, it's it's possible different characters might have different outfits in different settings, but uh, it's tough to know whether that continuity is, is intentional or or not. And in this one, the realism, I mean, there, there's this ornate gold design on on the forearm piece, which again, looks super cool. I mean, the realism one is amazing, right? The, the gold detail, the highlights are beautiful, you know, for this painted piece. It's, it's absolutely stunning work for this genre. Um, it just makes you wonder, you know, which is going to be most official. This Yara and this one, we we have to look at another image because you can only see a little bit on the side. But yeah, it's it's super cool. I mean, these are looking very sharp. Um, we just need to figure out what's going on with each one and see. All right, let's pull this up. We'll pull up each uh, cover by their image. Okay. So this one, we have the fuller one. So this has uh, uh, Deborah Carita and Jay Brown on the cover. I think this one is pretty wild, this cover, because um, it feels very much uh, like 80s comics in terms of the high detail, like late 80s, early 90s. Um, very intense, competent drawings, great physical proportions. Uh, it's you know, very competent for this genre. The question, of course, as always, is just if we look at the belt here, right? We got the gold belt with the blue triangle inside there. Is that going to be the same throughout? And then we have the, the arms here. You know, we saw the, the arm design, another one. Is that going to be the same throughout? This one, the composition looks great too, because we have the context of that ice girl like we saw before in those panels. So, you know, it makes you wonder okay, what's her interaction with ice? Is, is that a weakness for her? Is it something that she's ready to take on, you know, easily? Because, you know, with different people and powers, you wonder whether or not they have a certain weakness to anything. So, you know, it just looks really cool. She looks just, you know, powerful and menacing to the bad guys that are caught up in the ice. I think it's a, it's a fantastic cover. Absolutely. Especially for that genre. All right. So this is one we couldn't see as um, easily before because it was covered up. Um, so what's interesting about this one is that this has a very classic uh, comic cover feel, right? It, it has, uh, to me, that that quintessential '90s comic look. Um, it has the 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 kind of the bright, um, uh, I guess you could say, lettering effects and kind of notes about what's in the issue, um, which you know didn't begin in that in the '90s. But this is the style reminds me very much of, of peak '90s comic cover uh you know labels and, and design for the lettering and they even have the you know sanctioned by the ripperverse code of ethics just like the comics you know code authority it's a little play on that um i i love that they even have here you know they have uh talk bubbles the speech bubbles because it gives you a sense of the characters and it gives you a sense of of where you know the battle is right i'm looking forward to putting you on ice so clearly, we know that this is the uh, an icy bad guy. The, the the character detail on it is amazing. That that's something that, that's really impressive. Is uh, this character has a lot of different parts? With I'm assuming him, can't tell his junk, but you know, very, it looks very masculine. It looks like a mix between some type of bug, like almost like a praying mantis leg here, and then something like you know a humanoid top, but then a bottom body that looks like a thorax. So it's a cool looking character for sure. And it looks very creepy, which is great. You want, you want to have something that builds suspense that, that looks kind of freaky, creepy that gets people to be like, Oh my gosh, what's going to happen. Um, so I, I think that's, 
that's an excellent choice. And if you look behind, you have to really zoom in. But there are these little bugs behind too. So uh, almost looks like rhinoceros beetles. Obviously, I don't think it's rhinoceros beetles, but there's a whole bunch of these little bugs going on, you know, in the background. So whatever this creature is, I'm guessing relates to those insects. Now, with perspective, it's hard to tell. Uh, are these small bugs? Or are these massive bugs? And these bugs are actually just like 50 feet up in the air, but they look small because they're just so far up. That's a great question, right? Hard to tell. Hard to tell. This says the chilling first issue. So I love how they did you know this kind of uh, lettering effect here to, to tie the words to the, the sense of the, the character's powers, the chilling first issue. It says the first appearance of Steph, uh, Stefania, uh, Yanessa, Yantoni, and Magus uh, Newmite. New, or Newmite? Newmite. That's such a weird name. I can't even pronounce that. New, I'm, I'm assuming it's it's either going to be Newmite or Newmite. I don't know. Someone has uh, heard the pronunciation of that word. I haven't heard it yet. Um, but it's, that's quite a mouthful. Two U's, two M's. So we get a few characters being introduced with first appearances. When they say first appearance, it does make me wonder. By first appearance, are they saying that this is the first and last? Or is, are these characters that are going to be recurring? We'll have to find out. I love what they did in the top corner here you know, with the number one that looks beautiful where they have the label going over to the side across uh, the square bound of the, the comic. That's really great design. So this, this comic here just, I think, aesthetically is very balanced. The reds and blues are beautiful. Um, the intensity of having Yair on the ground with the character, I mean, this is brilliant. This, this is the type of stuff that, you know, is, is top tier um, comic design uh, in terms of setting up a point of, of action and, and making you wonder, you know, what's going to happen, right? This, this is great. This is a great advertising for, for this issue. So far, this is probably my favorite, you know, among the ones that I've seen. All right. Let's take a look at this one. So <clears throat> this says foil and embossed. So I guess this cover is going to end up being done in a type of foil that is raised. Um, and we had that before um, with the, the uh, Alpha Core issue. Um, so it was very good what they did with the foil emboss. It was super cool. I mean, the, the design was great. The, the texture was awesome. So I wonder how this is going to come out. You know, what part is going to be embossed? What is it going to just be the main character aspect or are they going to do every character? I don't know. This one's interesting. It's a little more simple, but I wonder if they did this more simple because of the embossing and other things like that. They want to emphasize the outer color. I don't know. But you know, great action, you know, showing these other characters, you know, it's not clear who they are. You just see these people that they got some type of armor and there's frosty stuff on them. <laughs> Honestly, you know, it could be taken other ways, but the the question of of what's going on, you know, is certainly lingering big time here because we know Yara's, you know, clearly trying to fight some people, but it's it's kind of weird with these characters as to whether they're in trouble or attacking, right? That their positions almost make you wonder. Whereas with the other cover, you know, very clear menacing guy, like going after Yara. This one really kind of makes you wonder what exactly is going on and what exactly these characters' roles are. But we saw from the interiors, there was some type of armor and some, you know, uh, it, was, it was maybe a museum, I don't know, but does that tie to this? Because this armor that I'm seeing here kind of reminds me of what we saw on that campaign in interior. So it's a good question. It's a good question. All right. And then there's this realism one. So just trying to pop it up real quick here to the full view. We did already take a look here. But I, I would say this, this one in terms of the realism, they had a realism one on Alpha Core. This one's, uh, to me, even better looking. This this is This is a even better looking uh, realism and in terms of the proportions, in terms of the overall design and the, t the painting than the Alpha Core uh, realism cover. So this here says Evans uh, 23. Huh. 
So that's cool. Yeah, this one's really pretty. So if you're into the realism cover, you know, this, this is a solid pick for you. Um, there's not as much going on with other characters. This is definitely mostly focused on Yaira showing her energizing up and moving. She looks really intense in her face, and you just see her face like here. Very strong, strong detail lines on, on the face and jaw really, you know, brings her out. Good body proportions, so. That's good. I mean, yeah, this is a great set of covers. I'm excited to have all, all four of them for myself and, and also when I get them to show them off and make some comparisons, you know, take a look up close and see if there's anything that was missed or if it looks better in person. But yeah, I mean, this this one right here is hard to beat. This, this is, to me, this is the... This is the best. I think a lot of people probably agree with that from what I've seen online. Um, that this cover is like, oh yeah, that's that's it. That's the stuff. Right? Between the detail of the bad guy and the action and just the color balance and everything, it just and the and the lettering effects too, it's really fun. It, it's very nostalgic uh for me, especially, you know, thinking about comics in the nineties. Um yeah, this this is a fantastic job of of doing all those types of Easter eggs uh, along with uh, making just a great art piece. So very impressive work. And this, I think this right here is really showing, you know, in, in a strong way where the Ripperverse can be going in the, ne the next level, right, of art design. You know, I, I'm, I'm seeing this continuing to uh, up the, the, uh, the game for Ripperverse. Uh, you know, if, if they continue to, to do stuff in this kind of genre, um, wow, you know, this is going to be next level. I mean, this is top tier stuff. All right, let's take a quick look at a couple of uh, posts here. It says uh, that painted cover would look great as a poster as well. I think the cover A one is probably the more canon version, probably. But I'm just guessing. Yeah, we're gonna have to find out. We gotta. We need some. Uh, we need some authority. Some. We need some Ripperverse authority on which one is the most canon design and why. Um, so I want to hear that. The guy who games less says, "I want more voluntarious Ripperverse is cool too, though." Oh, I. I definitely appreciate. Well, don't worry. We have more voluntarists coming. We have uh, the current issue. It's being uh, wrapped up now. I actually just got in um, a final design thing that I needed uh, for the comics we had to do on this past campaign. And the last art piece is being wrapped up now. So once that's done, we've completed everything else. We're gonna, um, you know, print those out, do the fulfillment, and then uh, we got something. That's pretty cool coming out. We, I have been working on something very secret, uh, and uh, I think you're going to really enjoy this next trailer for the, the next Voluntarius. So. Hey, oh, and Mike says, I have my Voluntarius order. In. Oh, okay, awesome. That's great. Fantastic. Yeah. All right. So going back to Rip Averse, uh, let's take a look here at um, the magazine, because that's kind of unique. That is something that new that was not available before so we have the first ripazine and as i was saying before having a ripperverse magazine i think is brilliant because it lets you do uh in-depth character stuff and bios and kind of gives you some you know more background to things without having to force that into the storyline um you know as you're reading it with like these side things like you know like an Again, it's it's not like it's a bad thing, but you know, many old comics would have those. You you read the comic, and then there'd be like some file in there that's like, oh, here's here's some like CIA agents write up on a character, or you know, here's a newspaper clipping, like a fake newspaper clipping about an event, and it's fun. It's it's definitely fun, but I like having something that's more robust, right? That it's its own art piece that's independent of the comic. So it says here a Sydney Br Blood Ruth horoscope prediction. So. They're having fun with that, right? Creating more character realism, right? Which is great to do, right? If you if you have uh, characters and you start to bring in things about them that personalize them, humanize them, makes them more robust, right? G gives them, you know, more details to their total personality. That's a lot of fun. It, it helps you connect with who they are and what they're doing in a way that transcends just having to deal with like following the chronology of the comic. So I think, I think this is brilliant and it's inspiring. I'm like, man, how could I do something like this? Cause it's its own special thing, right? Figuring out the best way to format for a magazine, but, and that's also a lot of uh, text editing, right? If you're doing a magazine, there's a, lot, a bit more having to write paragraphs and stuff like that. And 
That's its own specialty. So it says gossip and more with Lillian Ronashi. So, you know, having a little fun there, almost like as if this is a tabloid. And it says introducing a uh, salvage PI 13 page story by Eric July and Bart Sears. So this uh, Ripperverse uh, magazine, Ripazine, is even including a story, right? So on top of having these kind of character teasers or or ways to connect the character with more things about them in a fun way, there's even a story in this. So that is, it's crazy. I mean, you, you literally have multiple avenues of of engagement and growing the universe, you know, beyond just the comic. And it lets you tease things in ways that, you know, makes it exciting and keeps people connected to what's going on. So I think that's that's fantastic. Michael Copper, Gentleman's Tips. So again, more more little teasers, tidbits, almost like it's a tabloid that you pick up off the supermarket shelf, right? Uh, plus, previews of the first four Ripperverse books, books. So there you go. They even have previews too. So this is a total package thing. It's like a, a way to really get people to uh, play with the Ripperverse universe and to kind of you know, get a sense of what's going on and, and see some of the characters and things about them. I think that's really smart, right? That, and I, I do wonder what the ultimate function will be. Will this be more so something that's meant to tease it to new people? Or is it going to be something that's, that is more insider? Is it going to be, you know, something that's like, oh, okay, you kind of have a better time reading it if you've read the comics, or is this truly like, no, you could have never read the comics and you pick this up and all of a sudden you're connecting with the universe. I don't know. i will be curious to see, you know, where that goes and, and what they do with it. Um, but I, I think that it's just a great idea. This is just a fun thing that is easy to accomplish, right? In terms of their production, you know, it's not like making a action figure and having to do box design stuff, you know, doing a magazine, if you're doing printing is pretty straightforward with the art team. So it's, to me, this is a very accessible way to grow the universe, unique things um, without having to risk too much or get too knowledgeable right off the bat about other technologies. So that's super cool. Hey, good to see you, DCC. Thanks for coming by. All right, so we got that, Ripaverse Magazine, and then there's a collector's edition. So we'll just take a look at the art. All right, so this one has a very similar, um, I guess you could say, uh, framing. They, they certainly are keeping the whole, this could be a tabloid magazine and a grocery store in your checkout. Because it says, Lillian's Hot Tea Gossip, previews are first for books, Michael's Gentleman Tips, so... A little bit less uh, like People Magazine or OK Magazine because it's not showing the characters for each thing. It's more just at the top. And then this one is in... Oh, OK. So this is introducing that salvage character, uh, the private investigator, uh, with a really nice full body design. So this is great because this really gives you a sense of the character and his outfit. And wow, look at that. The whole character has uh, got these pinstripes here. He's got what looks like a Beretta for his, you know, for his gun. He's got a, a cool brimmed hat. He's got this belt that's got this golden buckle. Looks like some type of a holster for his Beretta looking gun. Jacket, some type of clasp for the jacket. He's got some black shoes. And it looks like he's coming down what might be a stairwell or something just based on the shadows here and the railing. So, okay. So this is just a collector's edition. So this is really because you want that cool art. This, you know, this this introduction of this character, Salvage P.I. and what, you know, his part is. So I like that they're doing this um, P.I. aspect because they have the Alpha Core, which is more so the... Uh, official police of XFs. And then they have the private side of things, just like Goody, right? The Goody, you know, he's he's a private guy. So we got another private guy who's a private eye. So that's really great uh, to have that as well. I think that's gonna be a lot of fun. But I wonder if his private investigation is going to be a part of unveiling the mystery behind XFs. That's my wonder. Is Is his purpose in the story to be a part of uncovering the mysteries and giving a a character who drives that question and that, that investigation about who are accepts, who's doing what, and and you know who's responsible for what. I could see that being the case. I could see that being the case that uh, 
he his his purpose in the universe is to, to kind of help foster those those questions those investigations i do like the color scheme i love his design i think this is going to be fun so i picked that up obviously it's going to probably be the same interior right if it's just a collector's edition it's just a different cover maybe i don't know let's see but um i'm very excited to read that let's see here it says introducing the inaugural ripperverse exclusive magazine product limited edition collector's item featuring a stunning metallic finish so once these coveted copies are sold out they'll never be reprinted ensuring their unparalleled exclusivity for collectors okay so it just has a metallic finish with that different cover. It doesn't say, at least outright, that the interior content's different. So if it is, it's just not mentioned there, but uh, it's just about the cover and having a metallic shine. So that's awesome. That's going to look great. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to really quick take a look at a couple more of the unique items um, on this campaign. i got to wrap this up just a little bit before I have to get to another appointment. But I did want to take a look specifically at the unique artwork because obviously, you know, here I'm I'm all about the art, right? It's all it's all about the beauty of the art and then the story. So we have Yaira in this uh, shirt design. I think this is really cool. It's got this golden Y for Yaira, and she's coming out with her energy. Um, great choice. I think that's it's super fun to have on, on you know with, with the logo lettering design plus her coming out and that's that's a very strong uh and fun framing for her so that's a cool one and we have oh the 3d assets okay this is funny so here's a 3d asset shirt and they made it like as if they're minecraft characters that's so funny so i submit yara is you know it's 3d assets it's a good joke very very inside baseball but funny definitely a great way to play off of that so if you see someone in real life wearing that you're like okay you're you're real deep in the ripperverse world if you know what that is <laughs> oh here we go all right yaira poster all right oh so we definitely have it again continuing questions of what is canon and what is not canon i i have many questions but this is a great poster uh she looks awesome it has almost like a pseudo new york city Skyline, this almost feels like the Empire State Building over there. If it is, I don't know, but um, I love the hair in the wind. I love the body pose. Uh, I think it's fantastic. We have some chest design issues where, again, I'm not sure which one is the official, but we do have the gold in between on the neck and these gems on the side of the boobage. Um, you got the blue triangle, so that's, you know, Existent there, and then I still wonder because we saw in the, the realistic or the realism version, there was this crazy and de artful design on her, uh, you know, on her forearm glove thing or her band. So I'm wondering, is that normally a part of that? Is that something that happens in a certain stage? I really want to know. So, but yeah, good, great stuff, great designs. Continue to kick butt and keep getting better and better with with each art um set it's it's really something else all right so this is the ladies poster right we got ingrid valdez lena renashi blood ruth gyra altona um i think this is really strong because what i like about this is that uh you have everybody in a cool pose and view it's artistic where uh, people are zoomed in or out right it's not meant to be like everyone's literally with each other so you can really do some great poses um they have everybody doing energy stuff with the the wisps the green wisps and leona renashi's you know a little bit of pinkish purplish energy and you have yara even energizing up so i think this is a great uh poster to, to promo all these characters fantastic and I do wonder, is that in her hand? Is that a cell phone? Or is that a pen? I don't know. Yeah, she doesn't have any powers. I she doesn't have any powers, but everybody else has powers. So it just looks super cool. Having the ladies together, I think that's that was a brilliant uh, design move there to have them all together. It looks great. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think that the characters too, especially when you see them all together, you realize how unique um, these characters are together, right? You have definitely different looks, different power sets, different feels to them. So we're getting a nice uh, set of, of characters who you can connect with or, or like for different attributes, right? They're not just all the same. You know, it's not like Green Lantern Corps and all the Green Lanterns are the same. So 
Chloe says, Yara's looking hype for real. I know, right? <laughs> oh, and Super Galactic says, 3D has a shirt. That's hilarious. It, it was. It was hilarious. Uh, oh, DC says, we need a voluntary scene now, mate. Yeah, I know. I really know. But for right now, I can tell you what I do have coming out for voluntarist is amazing. And you're going to really like it. You're, you're going to love how we're taking things to the next level coming up. So just stay tuned. All right. So last but not least of these unique perk items, because other stuff's more just bundles. Um, these are the Dokuman cards deck two. Uh, we see Shadran. Um, obviously, I don't see the rest of the characters because I think they're going to make that a treat, you know, a surprise as to what you get. So I'll pick these up later. Um, I just got in my comics and the Ripazine thing, but I want to pick that up uh, toward the end of the campaign to help with the big boost at the end. Um, but I, I really liked getting the first set of cards, which I have. It's just, um, you know, it, when it comes to the, these things, they, uh, you know, they, it's a, uh, it's a big endeavor to open them all up and then put them somewhere because they're very big, right? These are not like little playing cards. <laughs> these are actually uh, lenticular prints, you know, that you know kind of change look as you move them, and uh, they're they're sizable. So you, you, if you're gonna display them, you got you got to have a place to display them. Otherwise, you you know keep them in, in their box. Uh, but these are these are not little playing cards here. These are you know big cards. So serious stuff. Great artwork though. So I'm very excited just to take a look at them and see where the characters come in. And I'll even here I'll read down below here what. Um, they say about it because maybe they'll help us out. It says, introducing Dokumon collector cards, a must-have for any collector and fan of the Ripperverse universe. These exclusive collector cards showcase never-before-seen details of characters from the Ripperverse, offering a tantalizing glimpse into the expansive and exciting world of the Ripperverse. Each Dokumon collector card features intricate artwork, capturing the essence and unique traits of these unrevealed characters. Ooh, okay, so confirming, unrevealed. Immerse yourself in the mystery as you explore the vibrant illustrations, uncovering the hidden stories and untold adventures of these captivating individuals. Also, what I think is smart about this by doing the, the card thing is, and this is also what I did too with, with Voluntaris earlier on, is that when you put your characters out early before you have the stories out fully, then at least you have it out there to show, hey, I, I came up with this kind of first, right? So, I, I, you know, I, I did that too with all my Voluntaris characters. I'm like, all right, I got to get them out there so people know I had them first, like in terms of coming up with these ideas. So this is a really great way to get the characters out in the public without having to go and be like, okay, I produced the books for all these people. Cause then you at least show, Hey, I came up with this first in case somebody else comes up with something similar after, then you can show, oh, okay. Yeah. I, I came up with this character first. All right. So it says as a collector, you'll appreciate the high quality materials and attention to detail that go into each card. The durable construction ensures that these collector cards will stand the test of time, preserving the allure and value of these rare and exclusive items. Whether you're a seasoned collector or just starting your journey to the Riververse, Dokumon collector cards offer an exciting opportunity to expand your collection and deepen your connection to this extraordinary universe. Don't miss out on the chance to own a piece of Riververse history and discover the secrets that lie within these captivating cards. Order your Do Dokumon collector cards today and embark on a throwing adventure into the unknown where new characters wait to be unveiled and cherished by fans of the Ripperers. So I will definitely be getting these, of course, toward the end, and then I'm going to uh, do an um, uh, overview of the characters, you know, once people get their perks, and then, you know, I don't want to spoil anything for anybody, but, you know, whatever, once once they're roughly fulfilled, I'll I'll go through the cards for those who, whatever, for whatever reason, couldn't get them or missed out because obviously it's cool to see them and see them up close with detail. And, and I enjoy doing that. Maybe even Fel will join me uh, with uh, with that later. We'll see if she'll uh, go through the Dokumon cards. Could be fun. All right. So um, the rest of the stuff in the campaign, you know, it's old stuff. They have the, the five. Oh, wow. Five dollars. What the heck? They have the Yara shirt for five bucks. OK, that's cheap. You got to get the Yara shirt for five dollars. They're practically giving away for free. That's crazy. And they have the, a whole huge. They have extra small to four XL. You better pick that up. I have one of these, but now I might need to get a second one. Five dollars. That's crazy. They're just giving away product at that point. That's a great deal. You definitely got to pick that up, right? I mean, for five bucks, heck yeah. And that's Igor's art there too. So that's awesome. And the oh the I want to have it all. So if you want to drop a band, um, you can definitely get all of it. For $9.99, the low price of $9.99, if you want it all. That's some serious dough. But for the serious fan, it is worth it always. So it's got everything, everything we pretty much just covered, including the signature versions of uh, you know the, uh, the four covers. But this is fantastic. I mean, just, you know, really incredible stuff by the uh, Ripperverse. Uh, Eric July is killing it out here. 
I'll, I'll even refresh here real quick to see what's going up. There's 8,000, yeah, 8,799 purchasers. Um, you know, personally, I, I see uh, Ripper versus having at least 10,000 regular fans. I would expect that number to hit at least 10,000 by the time this campaign closes. Um, I was already predicting this campaign would have a minimum of 1.3 million just based on the fact that um, you you have one of the most desired characters so far. There's a lot of hype about Yara and with Soskas, they have their own fans who are coming in just because they want to get the Soskas work. So I'm like, there's no way that this, you know, this is obviously going to be a million dollar campaign. 1.3, I thought at a bare minimum, that's you know insanely low. And since everything's going so smooth and there's a lot more crossover promotion and things like that, there's more time to do promo. I would expect that uh, this campaign's going to, you know, close very nicely as well. And certainly I'm going to help with that, you know, when it closes um, in a couple of months. Cause I think if I'm not mistaken, this was a 75 day campaign, right? Correct me if I was wrong. I'm pretty sure it's 75 days. Yeah, expected fulfillment start date 5, 26, 24. Or in March, April, May, May, it's March, April, May. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Okay. So, yeah, this this is fantastic. This is just really good. Just continue to up the the, the quality of everything, continue to uh, improve the product offerings. I, I'm just, you know, super thrilled. I'm, I'm extraordinarily thrilled to uh, see Riververse succeed and to see what else they come up with, especially, you know, the, the live action trailer. That was wild. Um Certainly, I, I would love to see what they can do, or they could, uh, you know, take that to. Uh, I would almost say, like in some ways, they don't even need to spend as much money for a big budget thing if they even just do like little teaser things, right? With um, just little little sequences and a little bit of CGI with energy, because me and my wife have done that for for doing teasers and stuff like that. Just doing little. Teasers with simple walks and, you know, a Zen tie suit or something simple. And, you know, you do a little bit of good CGI for it, you know, decent CGI. Even if they did just stuff like that, where they don't even have to have a huge, you know, camera crew, that would be pretty cool. Just showing a little character, someone cosplaying, and then they energize up and boom, that's like a little teaser for the comic. So I just want to see what they do. I'm really excited to see um, how many different ways they tease the universe. Because, you know, we've seen animation. Now we've seen a version of live action. You know, it'd be crazy to see what they could take it to the next level with. I mean, it's, it's very tantalizing to see to see where they apply their resources and what they decide to do which which angle they decide to do next um man man it's really gets you wondering what's possible so oh here we go look at this just or the og hour shirt 450 remember yeah, exactly it's like how could you have like five bucks that's crazy like it's a great art by igor to share it so it's like how could you not just throw that in there if you're gonna get a comic get that shirt too um Oh, yes. And Chloe says, speaking of the live action trailers, I wonder if the Bloodruth horror book will have a live action trailer. That's what I'm saying. It's something like that, right? That that wouldn't take, you know, horror can be done right, you know, without a big budget, uh, potentially, if you know how to, uh, you know, stage and shoot right and use some practical effects. Um, you know, I've done a few things like that myself. What can I say? But it, it, it's definitely doable. And I think that maybe, you know, maybe they uh, they consider what they can do again maybe not go for length right because you you can because it was a long trailer too i mean they went it was i was surprised I was like wait what this is like four minutes I'm like you're crazy i'm like a four minute trailer how'd you do that live action i mean they spent they clearly spent money to do that um to set all that up that was, that was a lot of work um but you don't have to you don't have to do you know four minutes you can just do one minute really well you know what i mean that i would like to see that i would like to see them try to maybe um shorten it to like a 60 second or one minute 30 second most trailer but what they do they like really take it the top top notch you know intentionally try to like um you know stage it high level really get the camera angles you know very cinematic um with the color grading sound lighting all the good stuff i would like to see if if they could take that to that, that next level I, I think that they have the resources to do so i just think that it's a matter of laser focus right just saying okay instead of length let's go for a uh, higher quality within a shorter window but make it like a movie trailer right you go you go to the theaters and you watch your one minute movie trailer boom 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 you know epic blockbuster sounds make that really a uh, hard hitting and close you know like a movie trailer i i think that would be great and i, I think if blood Ruth, of course horror i could see that very easily done with um suspenseful music right blood Ruth, you know, horror, a lot of what is horror is, is just 
anticipation of the unknown and playing with the instruments and the sounds that lead you to feel scared, right? You know, the heartbeats and the, the, you know, kind of like a violin sounds and like creepy sounds going in the background. So it's, it's possible they can do something with that. I can definitely see that. So, huh. but, um, yeah, I think that, uh, if everybody just keeps on promoting this, um, campaign and keeps on going in hard on this, I, I don't see how this couldn't, you know, be one of the best campaigns they've had, um, especially since, <laughs> I mean, I just refreshed and it's already, I mean, look at this. I just refreshed and it's already at 1.247 with eight, you know, it's crossed the 8,800 purchasers mark. Um, you know, I, I just see it continue to succeed and do well and, and, and closing very high. I mean, 1.3 million, like I said, the fl was the absolute floor for this for sure. So I, I really want to see. Hmm. Yeah, I re I just really want to see what what they do if if they go laser focus like if they if they and again it, it could be live action or animation but just being like okay instead of length we get it you know theatrical trailer animation or live action put the best resources you can into one minute and make that like whoa like you you know you're like oh my gosh I gotta go right now boom you know when that closes and the curtain closes kind of thing so. Oh man. They said, isn't that why you get the, the Soska sisters? Yeah. The Soska sisters, of course, they have, they have a big history in doing horror movies. You know, the horror movies they do tend to be more in the popular, you know, B horror movie genre, you know, just being realistic about what that, that level is. But nonetheless, again, it's everything can always be upgraded with choice, right? You, you can, you can say, okay, we're going to intentionally take our knowledge of the horror genre. And we're going to say, okay, let's apply the next level of equipment at the next level of you know camera angles and color grading editing and take it to okay i want to take this to the, the a level right you, you can do that especially with you know the resources that they'll have now to potentially do that I, I don't see how that's out of reach i don't see how that's out of reach at all so but hey i would i would happily uh you know sit there and and do a review like be a be a uh you know producer check to be like line item okay did this angle work or do you need to switch this angle or whatever if you i would i would be all about that so i'd, I'd be happy like all right <laughs> get this this camera angle this side okay you need to have this actor be here oh man that would be a lot of fun that would be a lot of fun so all right. Well, I appreciate everybody for, you know, hanging out here and, uh, you know, just checking out the Riververse. I do, again, want to one more time, just while I have you here, I do want to just remind you that our End the Fed music video uh, production um, is coming up. Well, it's coming. What am I saying? It's, it's live. It's not coming up. I, I just feel like I went to the past. Our music video is live on Indiegogo. So our End the Fed uh, uh, music video is, is something we're trying to produce. We've produced many music videos. It's super cool. And you can even see you know, some behind the scenes, scenes shots from past music videos and a little bit of the teaser imagery. Um, you could listen to this full song as well. Um, and you can even check out some of our past music videos, which they are pretty cool. What we do on a, on a strict budget is pretty impressive, I will say. I I am very proud of the work we do. When you hear the budgets we work with and the outcomes we get with that, it's it's really blows your mind. But um, you know, this is a, a fun way for us to help educate people on what the Fed's doing to our money. And uh, you know, you can join in with everything from a uh, physical perk or not a physical perk. You could have a credit in the film. Um, you can get a T-shirt signed. You could be an executive producer and and be you know, a part of the opening sequence or at the end, you know, an executive producer there and lots of cool things to do with it. We just love engaging the culture with all types of fun stuff. And, and on top of that, I will say we, we did also just record another song that is going to blow your mind. So get ready for that. We have a new song. It's in the EDM genre. It's going to make you smile. So in the meantime, check out and the fed, we're going to shoot that um, in Washington, DC coming up. So we, we appreciate your support. And uh, you know, next time, I'm going to update you, you know, whenever we're uh, completed with that and also whatever we else, what else we have uh, got going on or coming up with our other projects because we did, I mean, it's my mind just going because it's, we got so many projects. We did the Unschool Adventures of Jack and Fuck Kids book that we just wrapped on. That was, that was a ton of fun. Obviously, Voluntarist, I'm in production on for finalizing that campaign, which again, thank you, Eric July, for your support of that one. That was a big, big deal and, uh, you know, made my whole year. Um, and, and we're wrapping that up and then getting ready for the next uh, Suit Saga 2, the next follow-up issue to that, so. All right, man, it's a great time to be an independent creator. So I'm, I'm just so thrilled. Take care, everybody, and I'll talk to you later.